right to the questions and we'll start with uh, John Waro of the Associated Press. Go ahead, John. Hey, Marco. Uh, John Waro with the AP. Um, coming from Austria, and I see that your dad played uh, professionally uh, there for 20 years. But when you really, when you really thought about what chances you had or dreamed, dreamt about playing in the NHL, how much did guys like Thomas Vanek and, and you know Grabner and those guys maybe open your eyes and open your ideas to that possibility? Um, yeah, they did a lot, like for the Austrian Hockey Federation and for everything in Austria, like for hockey, because then you really like start to dream like about the playing in the NHL one day because. If you see like Thomas Wannick and Michael Grabner and even Michael Ruff playing in the NHL, um, it's a childhood dream for every kid then like in Austria. So it was my motivation too because I saw them playing in the NHL. So it was my goal too then. Thank you, John. Next question comes from Helene St. James of the Detroit Free Press. Go ahead, Helene. Hi, Marco. Could you tell me um, how did your interview with Steve Eisman go and did he ask you any kind of question that would maybe seemed off the wall? Um, it was really good with the droid. Um, not really any fun questions or anything like that. It was very good. So, yeah. How many times did you talk with them? Um, I talked to them twice or th three times. Thank you. Thanks, Helene. Next question comes, comes from Janek Matajowski of ORF Austria. Go ahead, Janek. Janet, can you hear us? All right, let's move on to Robin Potswald of NHL.com slash DE. Go ahead, Robin. Ja, hallo Marco. Ich versuche es mal auf Deutsch. <lacht> Wir haben ja den Namen äh, Thomas Warneck jetzt hier schon ein paar Mal auch durch den Saal geistern hören. Äh, was bedeutet er dir persönlich bzw. seine Karriere? Und äh, was willst du persönlich vielleicht an ihm nachmachen oder nacheifern? Oder wo siehst du auch Unterschiede zwischen euch? Danke. Also ja, also auf jeden Fall, also der Thomas Warnick hat extrem viel geholfen für das ganze ISAQ und ganz Österreich. Das ist eigentlich so immer schon der Traum, wenn man sieht, den Thomas Warnick, wie der in der NHL gespielt hat, ist es sicher ein sehr großer Traum dann für jeden ISAQ-Spieler in Österreich, einmal in der NHL zu spielen. Und der hat das wirklich dann ermöglicht, dass er dann wirklich so lange in der NHL gespielt hat. Und ich würde sagen, dann sind einfach die Träume noch näher und du glaubst wirklich, okay, du kannst es dann auch schaffen. Und also ich sage, wir sind einfach unterschiedliche Spiele. Ähm, ja, ist jetzt schwierig, uns zu vergleichen. Thank you, Robin. Next question comes from Neil McHale of InsideHockey.com. Go ahead, Neil. Hey, Marco. So you mentioned you were doing this at, uh, you know, 10.30 p.m. your time. Uh, have you thought about what draft day is going to be like on that first day of the draft when likely you'll hear your name called? You're going to have everyone staying up all night? Because I, I have to imagine it's going to be pretty hard to fall asleep after hearing your name. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Um, it's going to be a lot of um, Adrenaline and I think the draft is going to be like 1 a.m. here or 2 a.m. So yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the time with my family, some friends and just enjoying that time. Thanks, Neil. Next question comes from Russ Cohen of Sportsology. Go ahead, Russ. Hi, Marco. Um, who, who taught you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It, my, it popped up. Sure. Um, you're pretty tenacious in the offensive zone. I'm wondering who taught you to be that way. Um, I think it was like when I was really young, my dad, like when I started to play hockey, my dad always told me like, try always have your head up, try to be a good playmaker, try to give good passes. And that was always too different, like to, I would say to other parents, because when you're really young, the other parents are always saying, try to score and then we go like to a restaurant or something like that. So they try to score every time. And my dad just told me like, always have your head up, think like a lot and just like try to help your teammates and be a good teammate. And I always tried that. So I think that's why I'm that good in the offensive zone. Thanks Russ. Next question comes from Stefan Herget of NHL.com slash DE. Go ahead, Stefan. Ja, hallo Marco. Mich würde interessieren, wo trainierst du gerade und wie sehen deine weiteren Pläne aus für diese Saison? Also ich trainiere eigentlich immer mit Zürich jetzt momentan mit bis zum Draft. Und also dann noch mit meinem Personal Coach, mit dem Max Kavale, trainieren wir eigentlich immer noch jeden Tag zusammen. 
Und ja, wie gesagt, mit Zürich trainiere ich jetzt mal bis zum Draft, bis zum 6. Oktober und dann danach schauen wir, wie es weitergeht dann. Ja, und wie lebt es sich eigentlich damit, die neue Hoffnung Österreichs in der NHL zu sein? Ähm, ja, also es freut mich auf jeden Fall sehr. Aber wenn man gedraftet wird, dann ist es erstmal das eine. Also zum in der NHL zu spielen, ist wieder nochmal ein sehr langer und harter Weg. Und ich weiß, es ist sehr lange und ein sehr harter Weg, aber das ist mein Ziel heuer. Thanks, Stefan. Let's go back to Mike Morreale from NHL.com. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Marco. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Um, Marco, who, uh, who's your favorite player in the NHL right now and why? Um, it used, like it was, on Perry Derzik, but right now it's Braden Point. Um, it's just like playing so smart. He's like the same size as me. And just like the way he's playing right now in the players is so crazy. Like, I really love to see, like, how he's playing. He's not afraid with his size. And he's a really good playmaker, good shooter, and just makes the team better. Thank you, Mike. Let's go back to Sylvain Saint Laurent from Le Dois. Go ahead, Sylvain. Hey, Marco. Um, Jack Quinn was just with us a couple of minutes ago. I think you saw him. Uh, he, he said a lot of nice things about you and said that you, you made him better uh, by pushing him in practice. I was wondering if uh, you could say something similar or, or if you have the same kind of impact on you. Yeah, me and Jack Quinn, we had a really good relationship because we had like the same situation right now, like with the draft year. So we talked a lot together and we always pushed each other on the ice, off the ice. And Jack, he's a really good teammate. Um, he's a really good guy. And he improved so much from his first year to his second year. He's such a good skater, good shooter. And he works so hard like um, in practice, off the ice, with work out. And he's a really good team team guy and yeah it's just like so good to play with him thank you sylvain have time for a few more let's go back to mark shag of the hockey writers go ahead mark thank you hey marco um i'm just wondering what was the biggest priority for you this off season that you wanted to work on and then do you feel like that you accomplished that yeah so my main goal was to um getting faster more speed more explosiveness and just getting quicker and I started to do that right away when I came back from Canada. It was like in mid-March and me and my personal coach started to work out that right away because that's my goal to be much quicker and we did a really good job and we've been working out now since six, seven months now. So it's going really good and we can see like big improvements off the ice, on the ice and I've never felt that good on the ice and especially my body. Like I got so much better in my, with my body. It used to be like it was really good before, but now it's even much better. Thanks, Mark. Let's go back to Helene St. James from the Detroit Free Press. Go ahead, Helene. Yeah, hi, Marco. I noticed uh, in one of the questions you asked, answered in Germany, in German, uh, you brought up Thomas Vanek's name a lot. Uh, do you have a familiarity with him or what's the um, knowledge there? Um, yeah, so two years ago before I went to Canada, um, he called me and just said like, um, wish you good luck with the season. If you need anything, just call me. And yeah, so we always stayed in touch and sometimes we call each other like um, through the year or during the season. So yeah, it's really nice to me and just talking. Thanks, Helene. Next question comes from Andrew Podnix of IIHF.com. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, hi, Marco. Uh, I, well, I was wondering, a lot of uh, scouts and people are, are saying that you were one of the few guys uh, from this year's draft who could jump into the NHL next season right away. What, it, what is it about your game that you think would make you ready for to, to play right away? Um, I think it's my um, complete game, playing like 200-foot game. And yeah, just like my competence level on the ice, my playmaking ability, my smartness with my hockey IQ. And yeah, like I said, just my overall game. Thanks, Andrew. Let's go to Jamie Pascal. Go ahead, Jamie. Uh, Marco, congratulations on making it this far, uh, being on the cusp of the NHL. Uh, who defined you into the player you are today? Um, it was my dad since day one. Um, since I was, he was like the biggest reason why I started playing hockey because my dad played hockey over 25 years in Europe, in Austria. And I was watching him playing hockey and 
then I went on the ice for the first time and we just like keep practicing on the ice all the time. And then when I was like six, seven years old, I was really good at my age in Austria. But my dad always wanted to show me there were like other good hockey players. So we flew to Sweden, Finland, went to different tournaments in whole over Europe. And he always wanted to show me there were like other good hockey players. So he did a lot for me. And then even with 13, it was like the biggest, um, how do you say, um, they sacrificed so much for me, like my whole family, especially my dad, because I got up like in the morning at six, my dad got up at five. I had to go to school. My dad had to go to work then. He picked me up at school like at 4 p.m. We drove to Zurich like it was like one hour, 30 minutes away. Then we came home after practice like at 12 midnight and I was maybe hungry. So he had to cook for me something. And yeah, and then the next day again, and we did that for four years. And my dad lost two jobs in that time too. And it was really tough for my whole family, especially for my dad. And yeah, so I would say my dad, everything he did for me, with him, I wouldn't be here, especially Without my family, I wouldn't be here. Thanks, Jamie. Great answer. Uh, let's go to Amanda Stein from Devils.com. Go ahead, Amanda. Hey, Marco. Um, I've heard that you had a conversation with Nico Heischer prior to coming over to Canada. Um, I just want to know what your relationship is like with him and what are the things that he may be told you about playing for Andre Tourigny and also playing in the CHL that convinced you that this was the right place for you to be? Yeah, so I played against Nico when I was like um, 12 or 13. And yeah, I just got his number when I was like really young, like at 12, 13. And then when I got drafted by Ottawa and I knew um, Andre was coach and he was coach before um, Halifax and he had Nico before. So I just texted Nico, um, about the coach and stuff like that. And he just responded really good about the coach and said, you just can learn about him and he's such a good coach and yeah. Thanks, Amanda. And we'll try one, one more. Uh, let's try again with Janik Matajowski of RF Austria. Go ahead, Janik. Yeah, I know it works. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah, all good. Um, Marco, auf Deutsch. Wenige Tage vor dem Draft, wie fühlst du jetzt? Und vor und mit wem wirst du das drauf sehen? Um, also, wie ich mich jetzt gerade fühle, eigentlich sehr gut. Ich um, probiere einfach weiter trainieren, nicht zu viel auf den Draft jetzt noch konzentrieren, weil es bringt eh nichts, weil ich kann ihn jetzt so oder so nicht kontrollieren. Ich bleibe einfach locker, genieße die Zeit jetzt momentan bis zum Draft. Und dann beim Draft, da genieße ich dann einfach die Familie, äh, die Zeit mit der Familie, mit den engen Freunden. Und ja, genieße den Tag einfach. Wie, äh, kann ich noch eine Frage fragen? Ja, auf jeden Fall. Ja, wie war es in den letzten Monaten für dich ohne, ohne Hockey? Um, also Hockey habe ich eigentlich schon immer gehabt. Also ich war eigentlich immer auf dem Eis mit Zürich oder sonst noch wo. Darum war es okay, aber auf jeden Fall habe ich ja keine Spiele gespielt. Darum vermisse ich das schon auf jeden Fall. Aber habe war eigentlich immer auf dem Eis am Trainieren. Thank you, Janek. Uh, Marco, thanks so much for taking the time and for staying up late for us, although it's probably not late for you. Uh, and, uh, you know, enjoy the next couple of weeks and we will uh, see you at the draft. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.